The opening range breakout is one of the most popular day trading strategies, and it normally uses the first 15 minute candle of the market open. But is that actually the best way to trade it? What about using the 5 minute orb or even the 30 minute orb? I backtested 5 years of data to find out which is the best orb setting. But first, let me quickly explain the strategy for anyone new to the channel. And remember, this isn't trading advice, this is just how I trade the opening range breakout. Typically, this is on the 15 minute orb, so I've got my time frame set as 15 minutes, and because this is based on the New York Open, I have to set my time zone to UTC-4, New York. I then look for the 9.30 candle, which is the market open, and that is this red candle here in this example. Once I've identified the candle, I can mark the high of it and the low, which will give me my opening range. And then I wait for a breakout outside of this range. There are different ways to approach this. Some strategies enter as soon as price breaks through, like this wick here. But I prefer to wait for confirmation. So I actually wait until price breaks out and then closes outside of the range, which happens on this green candle here. Once I've got that, I get my entry, which is at the open of the next one. I put my stop loss all the way down at the bottom of my opening range, and then I set my take profit to one and a half times the stop loss. And that's sort of the base strategy. I do have additional filters that I use to try and improve the win rate. So I don't take opening ranges that are too big or too small. I also don't take trades too late in the day. So I make sure that all of my trades are in the morning session and I've got all of these filters through rigorous backtesting. I won't go over all of that again now because I've got separate videos that explain those in detail and I'll link them in the description if you want to have a look. And that strategy has been working really well for me. But here's the thing. There are often trades like this one happened last month where the opening range is actually really big and yes afterwards the breakout was even bigger but if you look at the candles that came before you can just see the scale of this opening range by comparison. The problem with a big opening range is that my stop ends up being really big because it goes at the bottom of the range. It also means that I miss a large part of the move because it actually happens in that first 15 minute candle. But here's that same trade on the 5 minute chart. So if I get rid of this 15 minute orb and instead I have a look at what the 5 minute would look like, well this is the 9.30 opening candle. But this time the range is much smaller because it's just the first 5 minutes instead of the first 15 minutes, which is a much bigger range. So now I have my breakout on the next 5 minute candle and I enter the one after that. Stop loss is a lot tighter and I easily hit that 1.5 times take profit target and in fact it could have gone much further than that. And this could also go the other way where I actually take a 30 or a 60 minute or window which gives more time for price to settle and pick a direction. On the 15 minute chart this candle was my breakout and this was a losing trade but on the 30 minute chart this was only a wick so there was no confirmed entry here and I would have skipped a losing trade. Of course these are just a couple of cherry picked examples and there's loads of times when that wouldn't have worked out at all and the 15 minute worked really well. So I'm going to do a proper test across all of these different time windows. I'm going to start with an opening range of just one minute and then I'll work my way all the way up to 60 minutes. I'm going to keep the core trading logic consistent across all the tests to make this a fair comparison. I'm not going to go through the details of this code right now, but if you are interested and you want to have a look, then I'll leave a link to this in the video description. I'm going to begin this on the one minute time frame with the one minute orb, which means that I'm literally just going to be looking at the 930 to 931 candle. So that is going to be my opening range. I will then stay on the one minute time frame, but I will just increase the number of candles that I'm including in that range. So then I can test five candles for the five minute orb and then 15 candles for the 15 minute orb and and so on. So I ran my back tester and this was my initial result. This is on the one minute time frame and it's the one minute or window. Previously, when I'd looked at the one minute time frame, I found that a two and a half to one take profit ratio worked best. So that's what I used in this example. But as you can see, that didn't work particularly well. Although overall there was a profit, the equity curve was really choppy for the first few years of the back test. It was only really halfway through 2024 that it picked up and gained a lot of the profits. So I thought that maybe a two and a half times take Take profit was too much and so I tried different variations and that's what this chart here shows. All of these different lines are different take profit ratios. Everything else stays the same. The stop loss is still at the bottom of the range. I'm just aiming for a bigger take profit target and here I can see that the red line is performing far better than everything else and this is actually a three and a half to one ratio but while it is more profitable than the rest it's still giving me a really choppy equity curve that I wouldn't be happy trading and then I thought maybe the stop loss is the problem because a one minute candle is going to be so small that the stop loss is going to be absolutely tiny. So a lot of the time it's just going to get stopped out before it has a chance to go anywhere. So perhaps I needed to test this with a bigger stop loss. And that's exactly what I did here. 
I increased the stop to be twice as big as it currently is, which actually did improve all of the results. And now this red line, which is the two times stop loss and three and a half times take profit target is doing far better than it was previously, but it's still way too volatile for my liking. Just this section alone gives a massive drawdown before it picks back up again. And I think in this situation, some of the smaller take profit targets actually give a steadier equity curve. For example, the drawdowns of this green line here don't seem to be quite as severe. And that is the two and a half times take profit target. Now, if I just take that one in isolation and here the performance doesn't look too bad, but overall it's still quite a choppy equity curve. I think ultimately one minute time frame is just far too noisy and the trades will often get whipsawed out in that initial movement after market open. I pulled out the metrics for this comparison table and on the one minute orb, yes, the return is really good, but the drawdown is massive. It took quite a lot of trades, which I would expect from such a small time frame. The win rate wasn't amazing, but this does have a two and a half times take profit ratio. Typically, those two numbers are correlated. So when this one goes up, this one tends to come down. But at least this gives me a benchmark and I can now start looking at the five minute orb. I repeated the same exercise here by simulating various take profit and stop loss targets, but I don't want to repeat all of those. So this is the best result out of all those simulations. The settings are actually exactly the same as for the one minute orb. It needed a two times stop loss because otherwise it just got whipsawed out far too much. And the two and a half times target gave the best balance between overall profit and drawdown. And now we can see how the two orb windows stack up against each other. The five minute wasn't as profitable, but it did also have a smaller drawdown. Overall, it didn't take anywhere near as many trades, and I would expect it to have fewer than the one minute. Interestingly though, while the take profit target was the same, the win rate was actually better than on the one minute orb, which supports the theory that on the lower time frame, there's just far too much noise and trades get whipsawed out more frequently. And then we come on to the 15 minute orb, and this was where I saw a real jump in performance. The final balance was far bigger than either the one minute or the five minute and while it did have some drawdowns overall it's nowhere near as choppy as the other two and in terms of the settings two and a half times take profit was the best version but the stop loss didn't have to be increased this time so i used the normal stop loss of just putting it at the bottom of the opening range and typically that range was big enough that trades weren't getting stopped out too often and now with those numbers side by side, the difference becomes more obvious. The annual return on a 15 minute orb is far bigger than the other two. And the drawdowns actually slightly decreased again from the five minute. Strangely, it took more trades than the five minute orb. And while the take profit ratio was still two and a half, this pattern of increasing win rate continued, meaning that on pretty much every metric, the 15 minute orb was better than the two that I looked at before. But now what happens if I go further and start looking at 30 minutes and even 60 minute orb? Well, I repeated the optimization exercise on the 30 minute orb and the only thing that's different in each of these curves is the take profit target. The opening range is now big enough that I don't need to change the stop loss. So again, it's just at the bottom of the range. So that stayed the same through all of the tests, but the take profit target increased by 0.5 for each one. And what I found interesting here is that while on the other orb windows, there was a big difference between the equity curves, here a lot of them are actually moving closely together. Out of those different simulations, I picked the one that gave me the best combination of overall profit versus drawdown, which is this curve here. This is based on a one and a half times take profit ratio. So this is the first time that I'm dropping down from two and a half, but I noticed already that the final balance Balance is a lot lower than what I've seen with the previous tests. So the profitability is definitely dropping off. And finally, we come to the 60 minute orb. Out of all the simulations that I ran on it, this was the best configuration and it used a two and a half times take profit. The final balance is quite similar to the 30 minute orb. So this one has also dropped off quite a lot, but the equity curve looks reasonably smooth and probably better than the 30 minute orb. And now I can do a final side by side comparison. As expected, the annual return on the 30 and the 60 minute orbs is smaller than the other three that I looked at, but the drawdown is far better with the 60 minute giving me the best one of all of the tests. The number of trades continued to decrease and really dropped off on the 60 minute orb, but the trend and win rate continued again. So with the exception of the 30 minute where one and a half times take profit was the best, which naturally meant that the win rate would be quite a bit higher, all of the others are comparable. They all had two and a half times take profit target, but with each increasing orb window, the win rate continued to go up. So finally, what do all these numbers actually tell me? Well, first of all, I can see that this actually makes a profit on all of these different configurations, but the smaller windows do seem to be noisier and result in a bigger drawdown. 
On the other hand, the longer windows seem to be more of a slow and steady. The return isn't as good, but the drawdown is much better. The 15 minute seems to give the best balance, which may be part of the reason why it's so popular. With all of these backtests, there is an element of curve fitting, but this is a well-known strategy, and the purpose of this backtest is to show how the different variants of it would have performed. Overall, these results give me confidence in the strategy, because generally, all the tests show profitability, just some jaggy equity curves or high drawdown. Something else I've talked about in previous videos is testing out a breakout, pullback and continuation pattern. I still haven't got around to testing this out properly, but it's something that I really want to do and I plan to tackle it soon. So make sure that you subscribe to get notified when I post that video.